The Cathedral of Sevilla is the world's largest Gothic church. By any standard, the cathedral is unbelievably huge and amazingly beautiful. There are so many tall columns holding up the lofty ceiling 130 feet above the floor that it seems like you are strolling through a vast indoor stone forest. This grand church is located, of course, in the center of the historic old town with several prominent landmarks next to it, the Archives Building and the Archbishop's Palace. Situated on a broad plaza, it's also located right next to the Alcazar Palace. This site has been for a millennium Sevilla's main religious setting. Before the cathedral was constructed, this was the location of one of the most important mosques in the Muslim world. And 2,000 years ago, it was the scene of an important Roman temple. The entrance brings you first into the gorgeous patio courtyard. This courtyard is called the Patio de los Naranjos, as in Patio of the Orange Trees, which are growing here. Formerly, it was the courtyard of the original mosque on the site that was used for cleansing for the worshipers on their way in for ablution. This courtyard and the Giralda Tower that we'll see shortly are the only two remaining features of the original mosque. Entering the huge space, you might feel a bit lost and disoriented, stunned by the vast dimensions. You need a moment to get your bearings and get over the initial shock. So it's a good thing we have a local guide to help explain it for us. The name of the cathedral is Santa Maria de la Sede, that is Saint Mary of the Seat. This cathedral has 23,000 square meters. This is the largest Gothic cathedral of the world. They started to build the cathedral in 1401, and the construction took 125 years. Over there, that is one of the examples of one of the chapels. This chapel is called Capilla Chapel of the Antigua. The cathedral was built so large in order to demonstrate Sevilla's wealth as it had become a major trading center in the Middle Ages after the Reconquista in 1248. They were also in competition with the Muslims who were still in control of Granada with their Alhambra Palace and Cordoba with the Great Mosque. Sevilla's cathedral was part of this political competition of status rivalry. They said, we'll build a church so beautiful and grand that those who see it finished will think we are mad. The map gives you some idea of the structure with the church as the main body and then the patio to the side. And then we have four major aisles through the middle of the church and the central nave, altogether a vast space. This map compares the size with St. Peter's in Rome, the world's largest church, and you see that with the patio included, it rivals St. Peter's in size. Construction here was finished when St. Peter's had just begun. So at that time, at the beginning of the 16th century, the Sevilla Cathedral was the largest church in the world and perhaps the largest building, the largest enclosed space, surpassing Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, the previous champion. Among many burials inside, the most notable is that of Christopher Columbus. So important because Sevilla was the headquarters for Spanish trade with the New World. It is made of bronze, excepting the faces of the kings that are made of alabaster. Each king represents the four kingdoms of Spain in the Middle Ages. This one with the lion represents the kingdom of Leon. The other one with the castle represents the kingdom of Castile. Ana de Bac, Aragon, and Navarra. Columbus traveled nearly as much when he was dead as when he was alive because he was reburied several times. He died in Spain in 1506, two years after his final voyage, and was buried in Spain. But then he was dug up and brought back to the Dominican Republic, which is where he wanted to be buried, and he was interred there. But then after the Spanish lost that area to the French in a war. He was reburied in Havana, Cuba, and then after they lost Cuba, 
he was returned back to Spain and buried here in Sevilla, supposedly. It's still controversial. They did DNA studies of the remains in this crypt and found that, yes, it's matching the relatives of Columbus. So he's almost certainly buried here, although the Dominican Republic still claims he's buried there, but won't allow DNA testing of their remains. At the crossing where the nave meets the transept, you get the maximum impact of the size. It's 100 meters wide, 42 meters high, with a massive altar behind the screen. The main altar is from the 16th century, with the world's highest reredos screen behind it, made of carved wood and covered with gold leaf. This vast Gothic retablo of carved scenes from the life of Christ was the lifetime work of a single craftsman, Pierre Doncourt. Although built in the Gothic style, starting in 1402, construction of the cathedral continued for 200 years, resulting in a delightful mix of design motifs, including Renaissance and some later Baroque flourishes. This 1402 is the very end of the Gothic period, so this really can be considered one of the last of the Gothic churches ever constructed. One can imagine heavenly music coming from this choir and massive pipe organ. And there are many side chapels with further elaborate decorations, especially the Royal Chapel featuring a Renaissance dome. There are 80 chapels altogether in which as many as 500 daily masses were said back in the 19th century. The size of the cathedral in comparison to other churches in the world is a little bit contentious. It turns out it's kind of difficult to exactly measure the interior dimensions of these vast spaces. It's certainly the largest Gothic church in the world. No question about that by far. It is no accident that one is made to feel tiny and insignificant inside this huge space for the creators wanted to make you humble and disoriented in the presence of God. It took the first hundred years to finish the basic structure and another hundred years to complete the decoration and build the various chapels and side rooms. This combination of periods of typical of what you find in many of Europe's Gothic churches, but never on such an enormous scale as you will find here. By any standard, the cathedral is unbelievably huge and amazingly beautiful. Walking through it has been called one of the supreme moments of a lifetime. So grand and solemn, it strikes the visitor with amazement and awe. And then if you like, you can climb up the world famous Giralda Tower former minaret of the previous mosque and now the bell tower of the cathedral. Climb the tower, which is the entrance of Adea. It takes about 25 minutes to climb it, have a look around. Remember, 36 ramps. No elevator, no steps, but ramps. Walking up the Giralda is one of the most interesting and fun things you can do while in Sevilla. Not only will you gain great views over the vast cathedral and surrounding rooftops of the old town, but you'll also have the unusual experience of walking up all those ramps that wind round and round inside the square tower. The space at the top of the Giralda is a lovely promenade. You walk all the way around the tower to get your different views looking in all the cardinal directions, 360 degrees panorama spread out down below all around you. The view from its upper gallery is another one of those sights that one can never forget with the city spread out below as a map with white closely packed houses looking like toys. And one looks down into patios, rooftop pools on brown and yellow tiles, along narrow streets that wind like dark thread and then across all the housetops. Immediately below is the cathedral, next to it the Court of Oranges. It's usually quite busy with other visitors, everybody angling to get their shot get their picture, take their view. You can sit down on one of the benches and rest for a while if you like, and just generally hang out up here for a little while. It's kind of also curious just to observe the other people. That's always part of the show whenever you visit a place is 
people around you and their activities and what they're trying to do. You might get some ideas from them too. Watch their camera angles, watch how they're shooting. You might not want to be up here though when the big bells are ringing on the hour, so perhaps time your visit accordingly. And now the downhill walk is almost like floating down. It's a nice angle on the ramps, almost like an escalator to the bottom. The lower part of the tower was the minaret of the earlier mosque, and it was constructed in the late 12th century. You can see at the very top portions, different style of architecture, Renaissance, built by the Spanish in the 1560s. At the very top is the bronze statue, La Giralda, that rotates or gyrates and gives its name to the Giralda Tower. It functioned as a weather vane and a symbol of Christian faith. Back at street level, as you exit from this complex, you have a nice view looking at the outside of the patio with a combination of architectural details reflecting the Moorish and Renaissance past. We have got more movies about Sevilla and other parts of Spain on our YouTube channel, where you'll also find a thousand movies about Europe and some other parts of the world. If you're enjoying the program, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified about all of the new movies that we're regularly uploading.